What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a marvelous day. If you've been following along with us, you know, I don't know, two, three weeks ago, maybe it was longer than that, I can't remember. I have to go back and look at the video. But we tried planting fall Irish potatoes for the third or fourth time, maybe. Never been really successful with it. We've heard of plenty of people being successful with it, so we kept trying and we had some potatoes left over from the spring. They looked pretty good, so we figured we'd stick them in the ground. We use whole potatoes instead of cutting them up. And it looks like we may have somewhat failed again. And I don't know that it's anything I did. I think it's just kind of bad luck. Right after we planted these things, we got like a week's worth of rain, a lot of rain. And it seems like it happens every time after I try to plant some fall potatoes. Now we've been dry for two weeks now, maybe a little bit more. Haven't had any rain in two weeks. But right after I planted them, we had a bunch of rain. And so it's hard to predict the timing on that. The rain chances weren't that strong. We didn't realize we were gonna get that much rain but it is what it is. So today we're gonna to take a look, see what we've got here, see if it's worth salvaging, and then we're gonna kinda of go to a plan B on this plot here. We'll also look at that glass gem corn, see how it's doing, see if we're gonna get anything there as well. So on that video where we planted these guys, we put in four rows. You can see where the hills or mounds are there. And we planted Yukon Gold, German Butterball, Kennebec, and then one row, I think it was that row over there, we planted half red Norland, half red Viking. And I don't remember, besides that one on the end, which row was which. I don't have my planting map in front of me. But if we start taking a look here down the row, you can quickly tell that it's not full of potato plants. We have got a few here. There's one right there. There's one that just came up right there. And then pretty much nothing till we get right here there's one so there's a few in there but not a whole row by any means and then we go over here we've got a few more popping up here seems like it's taking them forever but there's a few that just popped up right there and then on this row we've got a you know same thing a couple that one there looks pretty good that one's pretty decent size and then this row I think this is the uh, Viking potatoes they look the best so we had a decent amount of those come up still not a full row but that there may be worth salvaging so I don't really know what happened here maybe they rotted maybe they just slow to come up but uh, let's scratch around here where we don't have any plants and see if we can figure out what happened so let's see what we can find here on the end of this row where I don't see any plants, although we planted potatoes. Well, there's one right there. Yep. You can see that thing is a lot of mush to it. Looks like we've got some roots coming out there. I still got some of that potato there that's kind of hard. So I don't know, that one might make it. We'll just have to see. At least half of it is rotten. I'm just gonna stick it back in the ground. We'll see what happens. Got too wet. See if we can find another one here. Oh, there we go. We'll be a little careful with this guy here. Well, there's actual, there's a good bit of leaves coming right there. So maybe they're just late. That one there looks okay. I can feel it's mushy. So it looks like we've got viable plants here. I mean, we don't need that seed potato piece to stay, um, completely hard there you know as long as we can get some plants from it it can rot away after that so we might have something there let's check over here see what we can find up oh, now right there I can't even pull that one up that one just completely rotted so looks like we've got some rotting going on on most of them Looks like some of them that are rotting are still making a plant there. So maybe we'll just wait. Maybe we'll just wait 
and see what happens. Now those plants that are late coming up make me a little nervous because I know when our average first frost date down here in South Georgia is usually in November. I don't know that we've got a whole lot of time for them to make a decent amount of potatoes. I said when I did this that the primary goal wasn't to make potatoes for food but to try to see if we could grow our own seed potatoes for the spring. Even if we just make small potatoes, we can still use those for seed potatoes for spring. So we still might have a shot at being able to do that. So I don't think I'm just going to till up these rows. I think I'm going to leave them there. I'm still going to do a plan B. So we'll have plan A and plan B going simultaneously. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let's check on this glass gem corn here, which wasn't looking so hot several weeks ago, looking a little better now. Now about this glass gem corn, I've had several of our viewers who I know are good corn growers say that this variety didn't do well for them. And it's looking a lot better now, but it's not looking great compared to the corn I usually grow. And maybe I was just due for a sorry round of corn. We had that popcorn here that did awesome. We had our um, Yellowstone sweet corn this spring that did awesome. So maybe I was just due for a stinker of a corn crop. But the leaves are looking healthy. The worm pressure seems to have subsided. Uh, I haven't sprayed them in several weeks, but I was spraying them about twice a week to really knock out that worm pressure. We've got some silks there, as you can see. And because we've got three rows here, I didn't expect the best pollination, but I did come in here with a little piece of pipe and kind of try to assist the pollination somewhat, kind of knock those pollen grains and um, help them fall down to those silks there on those ears. The ears don't look that great right now. The stalks aren't that thick, not near as thick and strong looking as that popcorn was. So we'll just have to see what we get here. Maybe we can get enough to uh, have a seed crop and at least try them again one more time. But I'm not super hopeful. I'm not gonna mow them down. We'll see what we get because we've got a bunch of ears out there but i just don't know if those ears are going to make anything we'll just have to see so we're going to go plan b and plan a simultaneously too in and amongst this corn here now if those potato rows were looking really really good and had plants all along the row i would leave those empty spaces that bare soil between those rows because i would use a lot of that bare soil to heal up these plants on some really big mounds but because we don't have that many plants there i'm not sure it's worth the effort to do that so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plant a cover crop here and leave the stuff that's here and we'll just see what happens with it so on our fall garden planning video, I mentioned to you that I was going to put this garden cover crop mix here. I got this from uh, True Leaf Market, I believe. Yeah. And so this is a mix of all kinds of different cool season cover crops. It's got some nitrogen fixing cover crops in there and it's got some non nitrogen fixing cover crops in there. Uh, the good thing about it is for the nitrogen fixing cover crops, they are already inoculated. So we don't have to worry about inoculating this stuff. Like I said, it's got a lot of different stuff in it. Let me see if I can um, tell you what all it has in it here. So we've got Austrian winter pea. We've got winter wheat, which I've never grown before. Triticale, I think that's how you say that, which I've never grown before. But it's a lot like uh, winter rye from what I understand. Forage collards, which I have grown before, hairy vetch, daikon radish, crimson clover, brassine clover, and yellow mustard. So most of the things in this mix I have grown before, the only two that I haven't would be the winter wheat and the triticale. And there are varying percentages of each here, and I assume they did their homework and kind of figured out which seeds you need more of and which you don't need as many of to get a good mixture and good ground cover. I'm not sure of the, how the the science works out behind that but I trust that they've got it right so we're gonna see how this here does I've got five pounds of seed in this bag and I got another ba bag of five pounds to so ten pounds total I don't know how much we're gonna need here but you know me I like to put out my cover crops heavy so I'm gonna strow the seed amongst those potato rows just basically over the whole crop or the whole plot just like those potatoes weren't even there but I'm just going to rake 
around the potato rows. We'll leave those there. I'm not going to level them out. And then the corn here too, I'm going to throw seed in and amongst those corn rows and then we'll just rake down uh, between those corn rows and then we can put some water on it and hopefully get this coming up. So the corn is not going anywhere. It's going to be a while if it does make some decent ears. It's going to be a while before that dries and we harvest it. But we don't really have to be in there doing anything besides weeding. We won't have to weed now that we have the cover crop. So it's fine just staying there. Should do just fine with the cover crop growing amongst it. And the potatoes there, hopefully if they do make anything, they'll uh, grow taller than this cool season cover crop will. And we can still get in there and scratch around and see if there's anything to salvage in a month, month and a half or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and start spreading this stuff and then we'll get it raked in. And like I said, this is plan B and plan A at the same time. It's kind of like what I did with those um, late summer fall pumpkins we grew, which I, weren't, I wasn't really hopeful about the pumpkins because I know the pest pressure down here is tough. So we planted pumpkins and we also planted iron clay peas. If the pumpkins don't do well, we at least have a cover crop of iron clay peas there. So we just kind of covered our bases here. Same thing here. I don't want to leave this soil bare just to cross my fingers on these potatoes. I think we can plant this here and the potatoes, if they are going to do anything, will still do something. And uh, we can also have a nice cover crop there to cover that soil. So plan A, plan B at the same time. Now, before we strow this here, I'll show you what this stuff looks like. I'm just going to cut open this bag since I know we'll use the whole bag. And as far as mixing, cover crops go I've had pretty good luck mixing just two but when you start mixing three or four together it's hard to get the relative ratios just right and I found it's just easier and more economical to um, buy the pre-mixed stuff so there we go there we can see a lot of different seeds in there those bigger ones are the peas uh, the little oblong ones there are probably the winter wheat and the triticale and you've got the um, kind of dark gray ones. I believe that's hairy vetch. And then the tiny ones would be the radish and the mustard. So good little mixture there. And uh, hopefully it all germinates well. I can see the little brown coating on those uh, winter pea seeds, which tells me that they are indeed pre-inoculated. got that raked in got the water on it now normally I would till before planting a cover crop just because I get better germination that way but I had cultivated that pretty good with the wheel hoe I had a lot of volunteer popcorn plants popping up everywhere and so in the process of cleaning it up it was pretty well cultivated and for some reason that plot there is the dirt or the soil is pretty soft in there so there's really no need to till it, it raked in just right. I was able to rake most of it with the big guy here and then between those corn rows, I had to go get old Manuel uh, for a little tighter spacing. So I'll let the water run on that. Usually from my experiences, letting it run about two, two and a half hours, consecutive days, do that for two to three days. And uh, that usually gets everything up pretty quick. And it's really dry around here. Like I said, we haven't any rain in a couple weeks, but, um, I'll hit it with that sprinkler a couple hours today, tomorrow, maybe the next day, and we should start to see everything popping. And while we're in the planting mood, we we'll might as well go ahead and plant this big piece right here that I've had ready for a week or so now, just been kind of waiting to plant it. This is where we had that big safflower failure. We tried growing a summer cover crop of safflower and it just didn't work out. And this is gonna be kind of a big forage area for our chickens because where the chickens are now we'll have a lot of fall vegetables so we'll be moving that chicken tractor over this way once this gets going and letting them feed all over this plot here and this plot here that you can't see beside me so we're going all clover in this plot now originally i was going to just go ahead and put the clover between these rows of okra over here just like we did the corn but i got to thinking well we're still in there harvesting that several times a week and I might be stomping it down a little too much and I had a viewer 
suggests that I try planting a variety of mustard as a cover crop called Caliente 199, a really, really hot mustard that's supposed to be really good for biofumigation. So I thought I'd save where that okra is and uh, do a little experimentation with that particular mustard variety as a cover crop. So we won't go there. We'll just go where I have it cultivated here. And we're going all clover, like I said. We're going with this variety called Balanza clover or fixation Balanza clover. Got this from Green Cover Seed. The frosty Bersine clover did really well for me last year. I just want to try something a little different. This is supposed to fix a little more nitrogen than the Bersine clover. I don't know that this gets as dense as the Bersine clover. We'll just have to see. That was one big advantage to the Bersine clover is just provided a huge, just dense mat of vegetation. No weeds whatsoever, really good weed suppression. This right here is supposed to make some longer roots, supposed to fix more nitrogen, supposed to be pretty tolerant to grazing. And another advantage uh, listed on the green cover seed site where I got this is that the seeds on this are smaller. So it takes fewer pounds of seed to do a specific area as opposed to like the bursine or the crimson clover, which have larger seeds. So that's one advantage to this. Another listed advantage I saw of this compared to crimson clover, they said crimson clover can be a host for a specific type of parasitic nematode. I can't remember the exact name of it, but this right here is not a host for that nematode. So if you have some nematode issues, this might be a better option than crimson clover. So just throwing that out there. So I've got 10 pounds of this. Yeah, which should be a plenty. Let's open it up and I'll show you what it looks like. This is pre-inoculated. So we don't have to worry about inoculating it to ensure that we get that nitrogen fixation. Always buy pre-inoculated cover crop seeds if you can find them. Alright, so let's take a look at this stuff right here. Let me pour it in here first. Wow, yeah, the seeds are tiny, 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 tiny. And if you can tell there, that's a lot smaller than, say, at least twice as small as a standard clover seed. Really, really small. I might not need all 10 pounds of this, but I might just use it. I like planting it thick. But uh, you can see there, and that little kind of white grayish coating on it, that's the uh, organic Omri certified inoculant. It's already on there, which is nice. If you can find clover seeds for that, that's always a good thing. So let's go stroke these. Okay, so they weren't lying about it being a huge difference in the seeding rate because the seeds are tiny. I know that seems pretty obvious, but I didn't really notice it till I got out there throwing this stuff. You can see there, I got a good bit left. I got to figure out how to pour this back in the bag. But I uh, probably only used five pounds. And this area right here is 40 by 40 approximately. I probably could have got by with two and a half pounds. You just didn't really realize that you got out there throwing the seed. The seed's so tiny. I mean, it's smaller than like a mustard or a kale seed. It's really, really tiny. I did also notice when I'm throwing this tiny seed, you had to throw it a lot harder. With most seeds, I'm out there and I'm just kind of giving it a nice little cast. With this, you kind of had to whoop it a little bit to really get it to spread out and, uh, and throw it good. If you're doing this with a a spreader behind a tractor or something or a mechanical planter you want to make sure you calibrate it right because you'll end up planting it way way too thick if you don't but i do see the value in there and five pounds of seed of that you cover a lot more area than you can with five pounds of another clover variety so as soon as our tripod has sufficiently watered the first plot we planted we'll move it over here we'll wet this down same thing give it a few hours of water for two or three days it should be up in no time. Hopefully we get some rain next week to help us out um, so we're not having to continually water it to get it up and going. 
So that's two plots down that I won't have to worry about until late winter, early spring, which is a good thing. We're in the process of getting all these plots either planted vegetables or planted cover crops. And once for cover crops, you know, we won't have to touch them for at least a few months. Now, where those potatoes and corn was, if we do make some potatoes and the corn does work out, we'll have to get in there and harvest that. But as far as the rest of the plot, it's kind of set it and forget it once this stuff comes up. Same thing right here. I mean, we'll put the chicken tractor on this once we get some decent vegetation there, but we don't have to worry about this plot for a while. That's the nice thing about the cool season cover cropping is, you know, October, we get this stuff up and going and we can just kind of forget about it and let it ride, assuming we get a little bit of rain here and there and uh, just let it do its thing until, you know, late winter, early spring when we're ready to plant something different there or it starts going to seed. Now, one more thought I had on the potato failure thing or uh, let's not call it a failure quite yet, but uh, not as good as we, we wanted it to be so far. I think maybe what I'm gonna have to do, and I'm gonna keep trying this because I know it can be done, is after I plant them, the fall Irish potatoes, after I plant them, I need to cover that pot with a tarp for about two weeks. Usually they're not gonna come up in that two week time, but that way to keep everything nice and dry there because it's hard to predict these summer rains around here. The weatherman have done a very poor job of it this year, but I know it's tough. And so I think I should tarp it after I plant the fall potatoes to ensure it stays dry, ensure they don't rot, and ensure they get up and go and get some roots established. Let me know if any of you out there have tried that, but I think that's gonna be my only way, besides just getting lucky, um, to really pull it off. So we're gonna try it again next year. We'll see what we get out of these, but I'm gonna keep trying till we figure it out because I'm, you know, I've heard too many people doing it successfully, uh, so I know it can be done and um, I'm determined to get it figured out. If you've got any fall potatoes growing, let me know how they're doing for you. I surely hope they're doing better than mine. Also, if you've ever grown any winter wheat or triticale and you got any tips or any kind of observations from growing those, definitely let me know kind of what to expect having that in that mixture there. I assume it's gonna perform much like winter rye we'll just have to see uh, so if you got experiences with those two definitely let me know and if you haven't already make sure you go check out our website lazydogfarm.com we've got lots of good recipes there garden blog recommended products even got some lazy dog merch you can grab like this hat and some nice shirts and if you did enjoy this video make sure to subscribe ring the bell like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.